hey, Sean, I wanted to make a video about how to set up your audio recorder, whatever audio recorder you might be using, whether it's one of the Zooms, a sound devices, a Tascam, whatever it is, how to set up your settings so that you can record audio in the best way as possible for video production. So I'm not going to talk about any specific model. I'm not going to walk through any menu of any of these in particular, but I'm going to go through the things you'll find and how to set them to best record audio for video production. So record a 24-bit WAV file at 48 kilohertz and uh, turn off all your filters and compressors. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye. While that uh, is mostly true, I'm going to walk through the eight things you're going to find in, in your settings menus and how to set them to best record audio for video production. Number one, you get to choose between WAV files and MP3s typically. Um, and this is the difference between an uncompressed file and a compressed file, or like a raw photo file and a JPEG. WAV files are uncompressed and MP3s are compressed. If you wanna have the room in your audio to be able to go back later and maybe attack some hum or some, some high frequency noise or some, to de-s or de-pop someone's vocals, a WAV file is going to give you a bunch more information to do that well compared to a compressed MP3 file. After you've selected WAV files, you get to select your bit depth. Uh, choose 24. You can probably choose between 16 and 24. Pick 24 because it's going to be a higher quality file. It's going to have more information in it than a 16-bit file will. And so if you want to have that ability to really attack things later uh, and, and process your audio in a way that's going to enhance it, you want to have as, as good of a file's resolution as you can, and your 24-bit audio is going to be that for you. After you've got your bit depth, you get to select your sample rate. And your sample rate is essentially how many times you're capturing a piece of audio per second. And so 44.1 kilohertz is 44,100 samples of audio per second. And think about it like a video frame, where you've got 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, whatever. The same is true for audio, where filming at two or three times the frame rate doesn't make a better quality video. That's determined by your resolution, which is your bit depth. Your sample rate should match the sample rate of the project you're going to be delivering. So if you're delivering a 48 kilohertz file, which is most broadcast TV and most online video, then you should capture with a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. Uh, Blu-ray is at 96 kilohertz. Um, but if you, kn if you know you're going to be delivering at 48, it doesn't do you any good. It doesn't help your project's quality to film at a higher sample rate only to bring it down later when you deliver. So capture your audio in whatever sample rate you're going to deliver in. It's 48 for most things. Uh, CD audio is 44.1. Blu-ray is 96 kilohertz. And in some crazy places now, they do high definition audio, which is 192 kilohertz, which is 192,000 frames of audio per second. So it doesn't do any good to capture that high if you're not going to deliver that high because you're just going to discard most of that and it's going to take your computer time to process and getting rid of all that. So it'll just waste you time if you don't capture in the same sample rate that you're going to deliver your project in. For me, most of the time, that's 48 kilohertz. Next up, you're going to see phantom power. Phantom power is what you need to power a condenser microphone that doesn't have its own built-in battery. A lot of the newer microphones have batteries built into them, or you can put a double A in them or something like that, and they supply their own phantom power. But if they don't, that's what phantom power does. If you have phantom power on for a microphone that doesn't need it, it's not going to affect the quality of the sound. So don't worry about like it has to be off or you're going to fry a microphone or something. That's not a concern, and it's not even going to affect the quality of the audio that you get. The only thing that it can negatively impact is your battery life, and for me, that's very important. I use the Zoom F4, and if I use the phantom power out of it, the battery life is awful. Uh, and so if I'm not using mics that need phantom power, I leave it off and I get a lot better battery life out of it. But it really just depends whether your microphone needs phantom power or not. Turn it on if so, turn it off if not. And the next three things are your high pass filter, your low pass filter, and your compressor or limiter. And again, by default, leave all these off because unless you have a, a, a special circumstance where you don't have the ability to do this later, the way that most of these audio recorders work, and even the microphones that have like a high pass filter built into them, it, it doesn't do you any good to apply these things to your signal 
when you record it versus applying them later. These, these recorders are not doing anything special to give you a better quality high pass filter than your, your post-production software will later. And so for me, I always prefer to have the control to add a high pass filter or a low pass filter or a limiter or a compressor to my file in post because then I can turn it on and off. I can adjust its settings rather than that being baked into the signal at the audio recorder and I can't do anything if it's too aggressive or if I don't like the sound of it. So your high pass filter is just that. It lets high frequencies pass through the filter and anything below whatever your cutoff frequency is gets removed from, from the, the signal. This is also called a low cut filter. That's essentially what it's doing is it's cutting the low out and letting the high pass. High pass, low cut, same thing. And this is used for if you've got like wind noise or these low rumbles, uh, your high pass filter is going to get above where those rumbles are happening, the frequencies that those are happening, cut those out of the signal and just leave what's, what's riding happily above that. Your low pass filter or high cut filter is the opposite. Anything that you pick that frequency, anything below that's going to pass through, anything above that's going to get cut out. And this can be used for if there's audio interference or hum or electrical noise or things like that, those real high pitch things. This can remove that from your signal uh, and, and leave you with the usable happy parts of the frequencies underneath that. And again, I prefer to mess with these in post-production because I have the control to change them later or if sometimes the voice was maybe going into one of the, the frequencies that's being cut, I'd rather have that back. And so the way that these audio recorders and mics are built, it's not a better quality to do it as you record it versus doing it later in post when you have more control. And lastly, you'll see a compressor or a limiter. A limiter is just a kind of compressor. But what a compressor does is Instead of worrying about what frequency the sound is and cutting out high or low, it, it's worried about the volume. And if something is below a certain volume, it can bring it up. It can amplify the signal. Or if it's above a certain level, it can bring it down. So it's compressing the volume of the audio. So you don't have the same like really, really high and really, really quiet sounds. You have everything compressed into sort of a middle ground. And this is helpful when you deliver audio in the long run because you don't want somebody getting really loud and getting really quiet in the middle of an interview or something like that. But applying this later is always a better idea because you can control it more and it's not limiting your signal that's recorded into your file and you've got that flexibility. If you're setting your levels properly when you're doing interviews, this shouldn't really be that much of an issue. Uh, unless you have a really unpredictable setting, you're not going to be in a situation where something is going to be aggressively louder than everything else where it's going to clip your signal. Um, if you are someplace outdoors and there's you know honking or whatever and you don't want these things to clip in your audio, there's traffic noise or, or nature, then you can think about applying it at, at the level if you know it's gonna, you're going to keep hitting it. But I would just set my level down a little bit and affect it later in post because you're going to have more control over it. Um, but a limiter is just the high end of the compressor where anything that gets too loud, you're gonna limit how loud it gets so you avoid clipping your audio with sounds that are louder than your level is set to really record at the ideal volume. So again, to recap, I turn every one of these things off because I'd rather handle them in post where I have more control than baking it into my signal permanently. And I record wave files at 24 bits at usually 48 kilohertz, sometimes 96 kilohertz, depending on what the project is going to be. It's that simple. There's a lot of features that these things have, and I think people get scared and they, they worry about what should they be doing? Are they not taking advantage of all the stuff that they should? But the truth is record good, unaffected audio, and you're gonna have a much easier time shaping that and making a good sounding video in post-production later. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you later, bye.